Hello and welcome. My name is Mike Matera, and I'm going to walk you through a lesson on modeling in Fusion 360. In most cases, demonstrations of modeling will show you, from a designer's point of view, the kinds of things that you can do. It's free-form design, and it's all from within your own imagination. In this lesson, we're going to talk about creating a part from a blueprint. People may go to a manufacturing facility with a blueprint or possibly even a sketch on a napkin and ask someone to make that part. So you're not designing something that's your imagination, it's theirs. So this lesson is about reading a simple print and creating a simple model. At the time this video is produced, Fusion is going through a change in the interface. They're switching to a tabbed toolbar, as you see here. The current release will allow you to view that by going to your profile over in the upper right corner, selecting Preferences, and under Preview, you can select UI Preview. That'll make sure that your interface matches mine as you go through this lesson. Now we're going to do this as one continuous video, but remember, you can stop this at any time, and I encourage you to stop and work through the process. Now there are a couple of different ways to model a part. You can create a solid model, or you can create a surface model. The main difference between solid and surface modeling, I like to think of as the difference between a stick of butter and a balloon. Now a balloon is hollow. Surfaces and surface modeling is kind of like a balloon. You have a skin stretched across the outside of the part, but the inside of the part is hollow. Whereas with solid modeling, the stick of butter example, if you cut into a stick of butter, there's still butter on the inside. We're going to be creating a solid model of this part. Now if we have a look at this, it's a simple prismatic part. It's a rectangular part with filleted corners. There's a pocket that we'll be cutting in through the top. And through the front and back face, there's an oval shaped slot. There are some holes in that slot that go all the way through the part. Now the modeling process requires us to create a sketch of the basic profile. So let's start with our sketch. Right here we have create a sketch. When you select that, it shows you three planes. It wants you to select the face that we will be creating the sketch on. Now you can select any of these, but I always like to view it as though it's going to be sitting on my table. So I'm going to select this plane. Now yours may have flipped up into that top view automatically. I have that turned off in mine, but if you want to switch your view, you can come up to the upper right corner on the view cube and double click where it says top. That'll switch us to a top view. We can also move around the graphics area by using our mouse. We can use the wheel on the mouse to zoom out or to zoom in. You can also hold down the wheel on the mouse and pan left or right. Now I'm going to move it over a little bit so I've got roughly a 6 inch view by a 4 inch view because that's what it shows on our print for the overall size of the part. I'm going to start by creating the basic outline which is a rectangle and I'll create a two point rectangle. My first point is going to start from the origin, give that a click, slide over and you'll see as I slide over there are dimensions that are showing me how big this rectangle is going to be. Now I could just click the second point and come back and dimension the rectangle later on, or I could just say for the X dimension I want 6, and then I can tab over to the other box, tell it I want this to be 4, and when I enter that it gives me a dimensioned rectangle. You'll also notice that the outside profile of the rectangle is in black. That means the rectangle is fully constrained. Very simply, that means there's no guessing about what the size is. The system knows exactly what the size is, and it's locked down and fixed. And that's all we need for the first part of this, so we're going to stop our sketch. At this point, you can rotate over to a tilted view, or you can grab your corner of the view cube and slide that up and over. Now to create the basic profile of our part, we need to extrude this rectangle down for the thickness. And according to our print, the thickness for this part is an inch and a quarter. 
To extrude this, we'll come up here and select the extrude command. It wants us to pick the profile that we'll be extruding, which is this boundary we created. I'm going to drag this down in the negative direction, and it shows me here I moved that to a negative inch. And I'm going to make that minus 1.25, and we can tell it to create a new body, or you can also create a new component. We'll talk about that more another time. For now, we'll just leave it on new body, and we'll OK this. Now we have the basics of our rectangle. The next thing we want to do is round off the corners. And according to our print, it shows that the corner is actually dimensioned as a diameter. It shows a value of the radius from the outside to the inside of the pocket. And it's one inch. So that means this outer radius is going to be a half inch. For this, we can select the fillet command off of our toolbar, and we can pick these vertical corners. Now you'll see when I mouse over, that corner, it highlights. I can select each one of these corners. Now remember, to rotate around, you can hold down your Shift key, hold down the wheel on your mouse, and rotate. There are other ways to pick that, but for now, I just wanted to show you how to rotate the part. Now I can grab the arrow and move it in until I get to a half inch, but if it's not going right to a half inch for you, simply key in 0.5 and enter the value. Now we have the basic outside profile of our part. Next, I want to create the profile for the inside pocket. We're going to be drawing that pocket on this top face. We'll create a new sketch for that. So select Create Sketch, and it asks you which plane you want to create this in. Now, I could pick this plane right here, because it's the same plane as the top of the part, but it's important that you pick things that keep a relationship. I don't want this sketch to be in relationship to this plane. I want it to be in relationship to the top of this part. So if the top of the part moves for any reason, I want my geometry to move with it. So we'll select that as the surface that we're going to be drawing on. Now according to our print, it shows that we have a wall thickness of 300 thousandths. So basically, I need to shift this outer wall in 300 thousandths to start with. For that, we can use the Offset command. So I'll select Offset. With Offset, I can pick an individual wall, or I can pick a continuous chain. We want to offset everything around the outer boundary in 300 thousandths. So we'll leave that set to Chain. I'll select this outer curve. I'll grab the blue arrow, slide that in, and I could slide that in until I get to 300 thousandths, or I can just key in 0.3 and OK that. Next, we need to create the circle that matches this inside for the holes. So I'm going to go to Center Diameter Circle. We're going to pick this point, which represents the center of our circle. And instead of keying in a dimension, I'm just going to slide out until it connects to the end point of the line and the fillet. When it does that, it should be at exactly one inch. And I'll do the same here. Pick my center point and pick this outer edge of the line. Again, they're all black because they're locked down. This edge is locked down in relationship to the outer edge. These circles are locked down from this center point and also connected to the outer edge. So everything is constrained to some other existing geometry. Now on some systems, you might have to go and trim this together and cut away the sections of geometry that you don't need. With Fusion, all we really need is this inside boundary here. We'll leave it just the way it is. We're going to stop our sketch. We're going to do another extrude. I'm going to pick the area that I want to extrude. And I'm going to move my arrow down. 
And because it knows we're going down into an existing block, it knows that the operation type is going to be a cut boundary. We're cutting away the inside of this pocket. And I can slide that down till I get to one inch, which is what my print calls for, for the total depth of the pocket. And then I can OK that. Next, we need to put some fillets in these corners. And according to our print, it says that is a 200 thousandths radius fillet in each one of those corners. So again, we're going to go to the fillet command, and I'll pick each one of those vertical edges. Now again, you can't always see what it is you're picking. Sometimes when you mouse over it, you'll be able to grab it. But you can also hold down your left mouse button, and then it shows you all the choices that are available. So when I see the edge that I want, I can grab that. But in some cases, you may have to rotate it a little bit to get exactly what you want. With all of those verticals selected, I can key in a value of 0.2 and enter that. And we've created a fillet on all the sharp edges inside the pocket. Next, we need to create a counterboard hole on each one of these corners. Now, for that, we're going to need some geometry. Again, I'm going to create another sketch. Sketch is going to be on this top edge. The geometry I'm going to create is going to be a point. And when I mouse over this area, it should find the center point. You'll see a circle show up that's showing us it's actually grabbing a center of a circle. If you're not getting that, you may need to zoom in a little bit. So with those four geometry points selected, we'll stop this sketch. I also want to show you that all of your sketches are listed here in the tree under Sketch. And each time you use a sketch, it gets turned off. Right now, the sketch for our points are still visible. Well, let's create those holes. So we're going to go to Create, and I'll slide up to the Hole command. And we can tell it what kind of hole we're going to be creating and where those holes will be located. So I'm going to grab each one of these points as the location for the hole. And for my hole type, I'm going to set this to a counterboard hole. Now, according to our print, the top diameter for the counter bore is 0.562. The diameter for the drilled hole is 0.391. The depth for our counter bore is shown as 0.4. And here it shows an overall depth of an inch and a half. But to make things easier, we're going to tell it the extent for this hole is going to be through all. That'll make sure it goes all the way to the bottom of the part. And again, because of the associativity of the model, if later on I make this part thicker, this hole will still pass through the bottom of the model. It's better than putting in a specific depth. Let's OK that. And now we have our counterboard holes. Next, we're going to work on the slot that's shown on the front side of the part. So we'll be working on a completely different plane than we have been. Now, according to our print, it says the slot is 2 inches wide, end to end, a half inch wide in the y-axis, and it's located 3 inches from the edge of the block, and the center is a half inch down from the top of the block. Now these are the important things you have to remember when you're creating someone else's drawing, is to draw it 
the way it's shown on the print. The print is your rule book, and you have to do it the way it's shown on the print. Now, we might change this later on to make it a little more flexible and associative, but for now, we're going to do it exactly like the print. So I'm going to create a new sketch. When it asks for the face that we're creating the sketch on, I'll pick this front face of the part. And now I want to move so that I'm perpendicular to that face. So I'll click on front on my view cube. And I'll roll my wheel to zoom up a little bit. So to start with, we're just going to create the slot itself. And then we'll worry about positioning it. So I'm going to go to slot. And there's several different types of slot. We have one here that's an overall slot. And that's the way our part is dimensioned. It's the overall length from end to end. So I'm basically going to pick a point here, slide over. I could make that two inches now if I wanted to, and then click my second point, and then slide out. And if it's not clicking to a half inch dimension, I can just hit 0.5 and hit enter. Now this time you'll notice the slot is blue. That's because it's not constrained. It's just a two inch by half inch slot sitting somewhere on that face. It's not anchored to any reference point. To anchor it, we're going to create some dimensions. So you can hit D on your keyboard, or you can select Sketch Dimension off of your toolbar. First, you want to pick the thing you're going to dimension. So I'm going to grab this center line of the slot, and then I'm going to grab this top edge of the part, and I'm going to slide over here, click that in position, and tell it that that needs to be at 0.5. Next, I want to grab the middle of the slot. And there's nothing to grab in the middle. So I'm going to hit Escape to break out of my dimensioning command. And I'm going to go to Create a Point. And this time, I want to put a point at the center of this line. Now, when I get to the midpoint, it shows me a triangle. So I'm on the line, and I move to the middle, and when I see that midpoint, I give it a click. Now I have a point that is constrained to the middle of that line. I'll hit Escape to break out of the point command. I'll go back to my sketch dimensions, and I want to dimension that point in reference to this edge, and tell it that that needs to be at a dimension of 3 inches. Now you can see everything is black, because everything is constrained. Let's stop the sketch. I'm going to tilt my view a little bit so I can see it better. As I do an extrude of that profile, moving my arrow in so it does a cut operation. And I want to move that in a distance of minus 0.2 as it's shown on the print. Next, we're going to put those holes in. Now, our print says that those are quarter-inch holes, and they're basically at the center of each one of these arcs. So we're going to create a new sketch. Those holes are going to be on this face, which is the bottom of the pocket. I'm going to create a circle that goes from that diameter out and I'm not going to worry about the dimension. I'm just going to click it anywhere for right now. I'm going to do another one over here. And again, you can zoom up if you need to see this better. Or you may need to rotate around to see the center. So I'll grab my center point. I'll slide out and click my second point. Again, they're blue because they don't have an actual size. It's just wherever I click them into position. I'll hit Escape to break out of the Circle command. I'm going to do a Sketch Dimension. I'm going to dimension that circle. And I'm going to make that a quarter inch diameter. Now I could do the same thing over here. I can grab this circle and slide out. And it shows me the current value of that circle. And I could key in a quarter inch. Or I could click on this dimension 
and create a reference. So now this dimension will be the same as this one. And when I hit enter, you'll see they're both a quarter inch. That way, if I come back here, double click on this and change it, they both change. That's all we need. We're going to say stop sketch. I'm going to go to the extrude command. I'm going to grab the center of each of these circles. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I could see a little bit better. I'm going to move my arrow in the other direction so it knows I'm doing a cut operation. And for my distance, I'm going to tell it all. That means it will cut all the way through the part. Again, so no matter what size the part may change to later on, those holes will always go all the way through the part. And we'll OK that. Now we can see we have the holes on both sides. Well, the next thing we need to do is to create the slot on this back face. So again, we're going to create a new sketch. It's going to be referenced to this back face. I'm going to go to Create, go to my Slot Options. This time I'm going to do a slot that goes center to center. I'm going to grab the center of that circle and move out to the center of that circle. And I'm going to slide out and key in a dimension of a half inch. That's all we need. And again, it's all black because it's fully constrained. These center points are locked down to the existing holes, and I keyed in the width of the slot as a half inch. So let's stop this sketch. We'll create a new extrude for this area, dragging into that direction a distance of minus 0.2. And that completes the part. So that's everything that was on the print, fully modeled, according to the customer's specification. So what did we learn? Well, we learned how to create a sketch. We learned how to create sketches on different planes and on different faces. We've used those sketches to extrude to create a new body and to extrude to cut away from a body. We've created lines, points, arcs, and circles as our base sketch geometry. We've learned a little bit about creating constraints. And we've created a fully constrained solid model. So what are the advantages of having a parametric solid model like this? Well, let me show you what we can do. If we expand our sketches, I'm going to go to my initial base sketch, which was my first rectangle. I'm going to right click on that sketch, and I'm going to tell it that I want to edit that sketch. So it goes back to its simplest form when we first started on this part, and I'm going to tell it I want this to be 8 inches, and I want this to be 6 inches. Stop the sketch, and you'll see the whole part updates. Now the slot stayed in the same position because this slot was referenced to this edge. If this slot had been referenced to the center of this wall, it would have moved proportionately, so it stayed in the center. So how you design things can be very important when you're creating a solid model. I can change that back. I'll right click on the sketch, edit the sketch, make that 6. Make that 4. Stop my sketch. You can also reference those through the timeline. If I wanted to change that inside fillet, I can mouse over until I see the inside fillet highlight. I can right click on that and tell it to edit that feature. 
and instead of two hundred thousandths, I'll make that three hundred thousandths. So if for some reason the customer comes back and gives you a change in a dimension, this makes it real easy to modify your part without having to start over. And that concludes this lesson. Thanks for watching.